Hi everybody, so back in video 1903 we made and looked at this thing which is a worm gear. Yeah, actually, strictly speaking, that and that together are the worm gear. That's the worm and that's the worm wheel. Now, they're super things for three reasons. One, they're really, really compact. Two, you get amazing gear ratios with them and three, you can't drive them in reverse, so they lock up, which is cool. Now, you get the gear ratio because one turn of this will move the worm wheel one tooth. So the gear ratio is actually the teeth on the worm wheel. In this case, it's 20 of them, so that's a 20 to 1 gear ratio, which will give me a 20 to 1 mechanical advantage, which is pretty cool. Now, when I say you can't use them in the reverse, the worm can go backwards and forwards, but the worm wheel cannot drive the worm. It just locks up. There's no way to drive it. And that's why they're used in things like musical instruments, because you can put the tension on the string, but the string pulling it can't release the tension because that locks nice and tight. So the brilliant things. And we used it to make a torque measuring device for wind turbines, which is really quite useful. But if you think about that, then there is something that kind of springs to mind because the torque measuring device was all about getting the wind to blow this, getting that to turn that, and raising a weight. Well, raising a weight against gravity is in fact a battery. Hydropower is an example of a gravity battery, and gravity batteries are not as technical as they sound. They're actually a little more than dropping a rock down a hill and dragging it back up again. And there are lots of plans which include dropping weights down mine shafts. So you hold them up when there's an excess of energy, and when there's an energy demand, you let them go, attach them to a generator, and bingo! And that idea also has been used to build concrete towers where you just raise and drop concrete blocks. Now, gravity batteries, well, they sound like a ridiculous idea, but they have an awful lot to commend them. One thing, they never lose their energy. Once you put that block there, it stays there till you drop it. So, unlike a chemical battery, they don't self-discharge. They last forever! And in themselves, they're 100% efficient. Converting them using a generator isn't, but the battery retains its power 100% forever and lasts an awful long time. The installation of them is much cheaper than the installation of a chemical battery. So they've got this huge range of things that would promote them for being a very good energy storage system. And of course, in terms of home DIY, they are stunningly simple to construct, maintain, run and use. And if you think about it, they're ideal for wind turbines, because most wind turbine towers these days, what are they, 50, 80 metres tall? That's a long way. So if we could combine a wind turbine with some way of pulling up that weight and then letting it go when the wind isn't blowing, well, we've really gone a long way to solving the problem of renewables and using an infrastructure that's already there. So that was the idea that sprang to my mind when I looked at this worm gear. Problem, obviously, is how do you get it up there, and then when it's up there, let it drop back down without interfering with the turbine? Well, you better believe it, there is a solution, and here it is. It's called a dog clutch, because these are called dogs, presumably because they're a bit of a dog to make. But they sit on the same axle, and this is able to move up and down, and it engages and disengages with that part, and that part is actually your output. So this whole thing goes on a single shaft with this bit. This bit slides into that part there, and that's able to slide up and down on that section while being driven. It uses a selector fork which goes into that section there to move that up and down to engage and disengage with this bit, which is your output part. So that output part gets engaged there, and that's how a clutch works per se. And a dog clutch works exactly the same way as any other clutch. The disadvantages of them is that there's a bit of a jerk. When you put that in there, it'll snatch and jerk, and you'll notice the two are separate, so you've got a bit of space. But it will give a bit of jerk, but it's fine for this kind of application. Anyway, that is the dog clutch. Of course, to design that, I turned to Tinkercad, and here it is. And these files are free 
for anybody to use and the link for them is in the description. But you'll notice there's a little group of parts and if we look at these two parts and that is the input and that is the output, then the input which has the cog that engages with the worm gear on it has a bearing. There are of course scatter bearings. There's a bearing at that end and a bearing at that end and on the output we've exactly the same with two bearings. A bearing there and a bearing there and they go on the same shaft. So they'll go on a piece of 8mm steel bar, 120mm long, that goes like that. This bit fits onto there. Like that, and then the selector fork drops in there to move that up and down. That bit sits on the other end of the bar in a fixed position, and of course this is then shoved and removed there to connect the input to the output, and that is your dog clutch. Now we do need some six skater bearings, a couple of bits of 8mm bar at 120mm long, and on one of them, which is the worm gear, you fit the worm gear onto one bar, and you'll notice there's two plastic rings, they of course take skater bearings. So in total, you're gonna need six skater bearings. Put an eight mil washer on the end there, and then that slots in there, and then this one slots in there, and that worm gear assembly goes onto the base plate. It goes onto the base plate here. Now on the base plate, you'll notice that one of the uprights is slightly thinner. This sticks out at the thinner upright, and that's because there's a retaining ratchet and the ratchet pole, which is this bit here, fits on that slightly thinner bit to keep the ratchet in place. But first things first, we need to glue that onto there. When you've done that, take your other bit of bar and stick it in the hole right there. Then that bit there, which is the input shaft, remember? We put that in there and engage it with the worm gear. So when the worm gear turns, it turns that. Then we take that bit, with our fork selector, slide the fork selector in with the dogs facing up. The fork selector goes on that narrow bit like we just talked about, and then this engages with the out input shaft. There we go, like that. Now it can't drop down too far because there's a little stop right there. Then we take two eight millimeter washers, stick them on there, and then we put our output shaft on like that there we go and you'll notice that the output shaft is not engaged with the input shaft at the right distance now we have our stop pole and that goes on there like that last thing is you'll find a tiny little five mil spacer five mil spacer goes on there we go and then we put our top plate on and top plate will only fit one way around Okay, let's talk about this mechanism a little bit. Here is where the wind turbine actually goes. As it turns, it turns the worm gear, which turns that section there, which is the input section. It's doing absolutely nothing apart from turning the input section because the clutch isn't engaged. If I use the fork selector, engage the clutch, the wind turbine turns and now it's turning the output section. And of course, on this bit of the output section, we've got a bit of string. As that turns, the string is tied to a weight and it raises the weight. The weight gets to the top, we deselect it and it would want to unwind, but the pole is in position preventing it unwinding and so we've stored that energy in the weight and the weight is now a battery. We want the energy out, remove the pole and of course that section is now free to turn without affecting that section which is pretty cool if you think about it. Now here we're going to put this on it. Don't get too tied up with this, it's just something I have hanging around I want to test and clearly it's a Vought style wind turbine blade but you could use a horizontal style wind turbine blade just as easily. That goes on there like that, then as the wind hits it, of course we're turning the input shaft unless we select it with our fork selector and now we're raising the weight when we stop that turning or deselect it. With the pole in place we've stored the energy, flip that switch and the energy comes back out again. Okay I've planted to the bench, I've got a bit of string right there the get, clutch is engaged and we're going to use a hairdryer to turn the turbine because there's no wind.
and there is the weight. Now it stops turning, we make sure the good pole is engaged, disengage the clutch, and it won't drop because the pole is engaged, but the minute we take that pole out, That's brilliant. So it works a treat, hey? Now, of course, this is a model. If you want to do a bigger version, well, just use a, a pre-made clutch instead of the dog clutch that we used. But there we go. An integrated wind turbine with energy storage mechanism. And you can do that with all kinds of things. I mean, I used a bolt, obviously, but uh, like in the picture I showed you earlier, a bottle of water will do just as well. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.